We have a weak word, Colossians, from the book of Colossians. And um, I'm going to share with you from Colossians, if you can be with me in that. And uh, write something in the Bible or in a book and go through it even later again. If you cannot write in your Bible, come to me. I will give you a Bible that you can write in. So um, then what I say, my brother, my sister, if you can... Sh- Write down what God is sharing with you from different pieces from from the Word of God. One day, your child or your grandchild, when they have grandpa's, grandmother's Bible with them, knowing what God said to my grandmother or my grandfather and what he has done in his life, that's part of the goals of legacy that you leave to your children and your grandchildren. Hello? Make sure... You do this with him. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Apostle means the sent one. You are sent into that what God has for your life according to the will of God. Make sure, my brother, that you know what is God's will over your life. Make sure that you know what is his will over your life. Amen. God's holy people, those who are set aside, the faithful brothers, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Now, we've heard that a lot, grace and peace to you. Grace, unmerited favor, yes, we can say that is to get you out of trouble, that you can be forgiven, that you're not going to hell anymore. But part of grace is God's enablement. So when you say, when you bless somebody with God's grace, you're saying, I bless you with God's enablement, that God will enable you to do certain things. Like when we would say amazing grace, how sweet the sound that, sa- that saved a wretch like me. What are we talking about? Amazing enablement God has given me. Amazing ability, his ability that he has given me that I can be a child of God. So in the word grace, it's God enabling you. Enabling you to be saved from the flesh, saved from your weakness, saved from the temptation, saved from negative circumstances. Hello? That God can set us free and may that grace be upon your life that God's enablement will always be there for you to understand how to break through in that what he has for your life. Amen? Grace and peace. Peace is not a ceasefire. Peace is not, okay, everybody's okay with one another. There's so much more to the word peace. First of all, from God, it has to do with there's a security, there's a safety. May God's enablement, God's ability be there for you. And may that secret place of safety be there for you. That is his peace. His peace. A peace beyond all understanding as we read in the word Philippians 4, 6, hey? Don't be anxious of anything. No, we're going for the peace. Don't be anxious. That's a a choice. That's a choice. I choose not to be anxious. That's easy to say. But to work through the process of the choice, don't be anxious of nothing. But in prayer, bring your desires, your everything, with supplication and thanksgiving before the Lord. And then, when you do that, then the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. Amen. So my mind, your heart can go all the way up and down, left and right, and all over the place, and a lot of stuff can happen. But you can have the supernatural peace over your heart and your mind, even though you are in danger of making a wrong decision, in danger of your heart going into a rotten place. But there's a safety if you allow God's peace over your life because you choose not to be anxious by giving everything in prayer unto the Lord. Are you still with me? There were three sentences that you had to write down, man. Write in. What are we saying? God wants to protect you even against thought patterns that's not in the right place, against things in your heart that's not in the right place. Through his grace, he's giving you his peace. And in the place of peace, 
we also see the other side of the coin. It's safety and protection, and the other side is his will. You know, many times we will say, I don't have peace to do that. Actually, we could say, I don't feel safe to do that. I don't feel comfortable to do that. And that is all in the word peace. So peace, you can write down, hey, it's about safety and guidance. Safety and guidance. God's safety, God's protection over your life. And that he wants to lead you. If you allow that peace, he will bring you into the place of his guidance. Because in his guidance, there's protection. When you go in his will, you go in his protection. When you want to be in his protection, you must go for his will. Amen. But even though you are not yet in his will, he put, when you bring yourself in prayer before God, he put his peace over your life. And then you go and work it out with God to come into the place so that you will be guided by that peace. Amen. Are you with me? Okay, that's verse 2. Now we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we've heard about a lot of stuff in your life. Now my brother, my sister, a lot of other letters also that Paul wrote. He said, we, we thank God and we pray for you. As we think about you in our prayers. Too many times you think about people, you think about yourself in the light of circumstances, in the light of your success, in the light of your failures, in the light of the intimidation, in the light of your, the things that you must work through. Think of yourself in prayer. Think of that brother. Think of that one that you want to destroy. Think of that one that you have an issue with. Think about him in prayer and then you will protect your heart you will protect your mind you will protect your life that it will not go wrong prayer remember is positioning before god if you don't know that write that down prayer is positioning before god so i position myself before god when i think about pity and yanni and sunny and when i think about them and i could become miserable about what I think about. Put it before the Lord. Amen. Put it before the Lord. I always thank God. When I think about you in my prayer. Let it be so. If you cannot thank God for a person. Then somewhere something is. There is some bitterness or some poison. Some rubbish in the heart. Must, that must get out. That you must deal with. But you stand before God and you pray. And even if you must say that person's name all the way. And say, I thank God, I thank you for him. I thank you for him. God, I thank you for him. I thank you for a father that I don't know, even know where he is. He just dumped me and my mother. I th God, I thank you for him. That you have an excellent plan for his life. And I pray for his repentance. Not just the fire on his life. But pray for his, prote his protection to be. Come a child of God. Amen. God, please save his life. Please get hold of him. You have such a dad, and the enemy is destroying him, and hell is all over his life. Awesome if he can have a child that is willing to pray for him. Awesome if he can have a child that is willing to pray for him. Because as you sow the grace, you will reap. As you forgive, so it will be forgiven. Make sure there's an open channel for a flow to happen through you. Amen. Please. Bring yourself and keep yourself in a place of prayer with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, not with moaning and groaning. That's a tantrum before the Lord. That's not good. That's not prayer. Okay. For this reason, verse 9. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. Now, please write seven points. First one is God's will. But we pray that God will fill you with the knowledge of his will. It's not just his will. It's, it's, it's his will not to swear, not to steal. It's his will not to steal. But the knowledge of his will is the heart of God in the will of God. The heart of God in the will of God, the knowledge of his will is 
God is the El Shaddai, the one that is more than enough. God is Jehovah Jireh. He's the one that provides. God is the good shepherd. I shall not be in need. I shall not be in want. And because I see who God is, that is the knowledge of his will. If I can come to know him, so much of his will will just be established in me. But just do the thing that you must do. You can do it under a demon of religion. And you can sit here with your demons of religion. I must do this. I must do that. Now I'm here and I must be a Christian. And I must walk a Christian. Walk. And, da, 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 and you think about all the rules and all things. Uh, what a waste of a life. Decide that I will do this with my God. That my Father God has only the best plans for me. That's the knowledge of His will. There's a reason why I mustn't steal. And also why others mustn't steal from me. Because there's, if there's a, a, a command, do not steal. It's also so that people cannot steal from you. So that you can be blessed with what God has for you. And God wants to protect you as a child of God. That is why he's commanding all the others around you not to steal from you. So it's not just a law of don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this. You with me? Amen. First one is the knowledge of his will. Second one. Ask God to fill you with all the wisdom. The wisdom. Wisdom is practical application. Everybody say practical application. Wisdom is to, to, what must I do with the word? What must I do with his will? How must I do what God is commanding me to do? How must I accomplish his will? That's what he has for my life. That is wisdom. That you pray for God's wisdom. How must I put it into practice? Give me an idea, Lord. How can I focus more on you in every situation? Maybe some practical thing is put a reminder on your phone for every half an hour, just for one week. That when the reminder goes off, you just put it off. And you say, Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Help me to work now with you. Help me to study with you. Hello? Maybe that's an idea. Wisdom, when to be quiet, when to speak. When just to love, when to address something. When to beware, and why to be there? That's wisdom. So James 1 says, everybody that lacks wisdom, ask. Ask God. And he will give to you. God is not a liar. He will do what he, what he promised. Amen. You ask for wisdom, it will be there. Wisdom will protect your choices. Let's say, wisdom protect my choices. See, if, if you allow God's wisdom over your life, you will be protected against the stupidious Choices. Let it be so in Jesus' name. First one is knowledge of his will, then also his wisdom, and then pray for all the understanding that the Spirit gives. The understanding, if you want to have the understanding that the Spirit gives, is all about the Word. So we pray for the will, for the wisdom, for the Word. If the word is established in you, my brother, you have an understand, understanding. If you take the word without the spirit, it will be a mess. Word very dangerous, very dangerous. You can destroy many with a word. Through a demon of religion. Or it can open up for you that you have an understanding because you took the word with the spirit and it became true. It became true. Truth that set you free. Understanding will always bring freedom. Understanding will always bring freedom. And it's the understanding of the spirit. It's not the understand to understand the logic of things. Because we want to understand the logic. We want to understand in the past, not anymore in Jesus' name. The logic of why God is doing this and why he's doing this and why. And how will this work out and how will that work out. And then it doesn't work out and then what do we do? It's not God sitting there and it must make sense to me. No. The understanding of the Spirit. The Spirit, the Word says, the Spirit will not speak of Himself. He will just speak the words of Christ and He will explain the words of Christ. That's all that He will do. He will give you an understanding 
of his word so that the word becomes truth. It will touch me. It will set me free to do what he has for my life. Amen. Okay. The will, the wisdom, the word that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and walk, have a walk, a life where you walk with Christ, worthy. A wandel met God. Afrikaans praat van a wandel. Uh, it's like, it's a journey with God. It's like saying a journey that lets we say your walk with God must be accurate. You can say there, the walk, my walk with God. He came to the Garden of Eden in the perfect world to Adam and Eve. And his desire was to walk with them. Hello. His desire was to walk with them. Now, my brother, my sister, if we always struggle to know his will and to deal with doing my, doing my own will, the will of the devil, the will of the flesh, the will of the temptation, or the will of God, and we're always struggling with that. And then also we don't know always how to apply it with God's wisdom. Then we don't know the word. We never come into the place of walking with God where there's not the issue. Too many times we just go to God in the past, not anymore, and to dealing with something or to know his will or to have the breakthrough for this. And that's good. What well, God wants to give it. But then he wants to walk with you. He wants to enjoy life with you. He wants you to enjoy your life with him as you walk through this week, as you walk through your studies, as you, you walk through the, 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 the facet of your finances, as you walk through your circumstances. He wants to enjoy that with you. If you can see that as an honor, as a privilege to walk with your God. Come on, man. Amen? In a worthy way. It's not a cheap thing to walk with God. If you really want to walk with God, you have respect for the one that you walk with. And then you deal with these stuff in your life so that the walk can be genuine. Amen. Where are we then? So that you can please him. So that you can please him in every way. Please him in every way. No, oh, how will we say that? I can do his will, but it's not pleasing unto him. I can do his will, but I'm doing it not with my whole heart. You know, it's like a father. That I wish my child, I wish my child could do it with his whole heart. I wish my child can do this because he loves me. I wish my child can just focus on me and he will not suffer so much to do my will. He will not struggle so much to do my will. It's... It's his desire. What is pleasing unto him, that is just for the sake of the W to work out. I said wish. I'm not talking about uh, some wish to have a stuffy dingy. What do you call that in English? Yeah, that type of thing. Not wishing well and all that rubbish. No. Wish in the context of this is his dream. This is his desire for you. This is pleasing unto him. He wished that you can do it with him so that you don't have to go through all those struggles. Amen. So let's work through this stuff, man, so that we can come into this place of having this walk with God and do according to the desires and the dream that he has for our lives. Okay, amen. Please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. In every good work. Fruit with every good work. Where are we now? The will of God and apply it through wisdom and find the understanding and the freedom through the word and then walk with him and do according to his desire, the wish that he has in his heart, how we supposed to do it and so that we can be fruitful in every work. Don't do the work without the walking. That's the previous point, was the walk. Hey, don't do the work tomorrow if you're not walking with God in that work. 
If you don't walk with God into your work that you must do tomorrow, you don't do a work. If you don't go with God into that work. Tomorrow if you're going to study, tomorrow if you're going to have certain challenges, don't go into that place without walking with God into that. Amen. And then it will be the good work, and then you will bear fruit. But tomorrow you walk with your stress into the thing. It will not be a good work from God. It will not bear fruit that has eternal value. You go with your fear. You go with your crisis into that situation. I must deal with this crisis. I must deal with this challenge. But it's you and your crisis, or you and your flesh, you and your good idea. There's no fruit that will stand. Nothing will be eternal. Nothing will have eternal value. There's no way. But my brother, my sister, if we can do this with the Spirit, hello, and you walk with God into that place. How? Because you ask His will. You come to understand He's the heart of Him, the knowledge of His will. You hear from Him some application, His wisdom. Hello? You get into His word to set you free so that you are able to do what you must do. You start to walk with him and understand his heart, how to walk with him. That you walk, not just walking with him. You know, have people that walk together, but they're miserable, you know. Because I must walk. I know how to walk with him, and I know how, but you are miserable in it. No, that's not God's desire. That's not, I wish my child will enjoy it with me. God's desire is that tomorrow you will enjoy what God has given you. Today you will be thankful for what is there. He gave thanks for five broad of, le- bre- broad of leaves. How do you like that one? Leaves of bread. Five leaves. <laughs> and two fish. He gave thanks for that. He didn't give thanks after the 5,000 were fed. Hello. You thank God when you still have the five loaves of bread and the two fish. Not only after 5,000 were fed. Are you with me? So let's get into that type of lifestyle. Get with your five loaves of bread and two fish in and walk with God. And thank him for what he has given you. That is his desire. And you will see. You will see breakthroughs. And there will be fruit for your good work. What you are doing. For what you are doing, there will be 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Let it be so in Jesus' name. It was standing till, is it not in Corinthians that Paul addressed the church and says, everybody who works, every work will be tested through fire. And a lot can be burned away because we've built our life with a lot of rubbish. And what we built is many times with what we say, what we believe, what we do. But it's not just in what we do, it's in what we say and do. Because you built with your words. But your, of your words in prayer, led by the Spirit, according to the Word of God, is that those prayers and what you say is in line with God's Word. If it's not fulfilled in your lifetime, it will be for your children, or their children, or their children. But it will have eternal value. It will not be burnt up the day that you die. It will still be here. As a promise. As an open door in the heavenlies. Over your children and their children. Is it not that God said to David. And to his descendants. Because of my servant David. I will spare you. Because of his life. That has more value. Than just until the day he died. But his life had more value. Because of his life. And what he said and what he prayed. And what he, how he worshipped God. Certain choices that he also made. Yes, he made mistakes, but certain choices that he also made. That it had that type of value that even when your child or your grandchild, man, is going to mess up. May God say that day, because of that man, I will spare his grandchild. Because of that grandma. 17 years old now. Because of that grandma, I have grace on her grandchild. That, that is part of legacy. So much more than just leaving a million rent to your grandchild. No, 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 no. Something that's much more value. Because a million rand can be a hell of a curse 
to destroy that person's life. Uh, it's not that you mustn't have a million rand. I don't say that. I'm saying the essence is how do you build eternal value today in your prayer, in your faith, in what you speak, in what you do. Amen. That's the testimony of this farm even. How we got it for free. Amen. Hallelujah. Bearing fruit in every good work. And then further to grow up. Grow in the knowledge of God. So that in all of this, my brother, my sister, as you come into this whole process of what we said now, every point, that at the end of the day, you will grow up. What does that mean? You're a child of God and you'll always be a child of God to come with sincerity and the innocence of a little child. And that type of faith before the Lord and you will enter. But then also, if you don't grow in Christ, child will become childish. Or child will become a son of God in the son of God. Amen? Less of me, more of him. Less of me, more of him. That's what the word says. And if there's more of him and less of me, I'm becoming a son in the son. We all become the bride of Christ. But in him, we all become a son. A sons. Sons of God. In the Son of God. Amen. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. Okay. So that we will grow up. So you can write there the next one. That we will grow up in the knowledge of God. In who he is and how we can walk with him. Being strengthened with all power. That's the last one. That you will stand and be strengthened. Stand and be strong. You can say be strong. The last two doesn't work out with a W, whatever. But you go with grow up and be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Is it not that we see in Joshua 1, God is saying, let this law book, let these words not depart from your mouth. So it's not just you have the word in your heart. I mean, if you don't know the word, if you don't get into the word, there's no word of God in your heart. There's, you can just be rubbish and other hamors. Hamors and rubbish the same, I think. Okay. But what am I saying? Get the word in here. Get the word in here. Because to, to God, for this Joshua, there's, he has an inheritance. You have an inheritance, but you will not take your inheritance. You will not be able to possess the land. To possess the land if the word of God is not on your lips. I'm not talking about prosperity teaching. Chiki, 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 chiki. You just say the word and everything happens. No. But you cannot cross the Jordan without the word of God in your heart. You cannot cross the Jordan into your destiny if the word of God is not in your heart. But if the word is on your lips and it will not depart from your lips, then everything, every place where you go, I will give it to you. Because where you go, there my word goes. And my word will not return void to me. So every place where you go, I will give it to you, Joshua. If the word does not depart from your mouth. Because where you go, that's where my word is going. And my word will accomplish what I sent it for. You will accomplish. Where you will go, you will accomplish. You will accomplish. You will accomplish. Because you are the great one? No. Because his word and he is the great one. Amen. Let it happen, man. It will be so for you in Jesus' name. Okay. Can we go on? Shoo. We're going to try. Um, I'm just going to jump. Verse 26. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The riches of this mystery. There's an amazing, amazing richness in you. Let's say there's an amazing richness in me. But it is not opened up unless you get through the Spirit, through the Word, to come to understand what it is God has given you. 
You cannot understand the amazing, amazing, amazing richness of beauty coming from heaven that is in your spirit. You will never come to know that if you don't allow the spirit and the word to open it up for you. But let's go for that. And who is it? Christ in you. Let's say Christ in me. The hope of glory. The hope of a beautiful life tomorrow. The hope that tomorrow life can be beautiful. The hope that next week can be beautiful. The hope that you will see and be surprised at what God is going to do in and through your life. That hope is there because of what? Because He is there. But if you don't relate, if you don't have intimacy with Him, if you don't hear His word, if you don't respect Him, if you don't follow Him, it will never happen. What a hell of a waste here on earth. You will go to heaven, but a hell of a waste on earth. No, let's not go for that. You have in you Christ, the hope of glory, the hope for a beautiful life. And hope cannot fail. We go back to chapter 1. We see, where do we see that? In the beginning, in verse... For because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all God's people and the faith and love that springs from the hope stored up for you. Faith, hope, love. We see 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. And now three remains. Faith, hope, and love. Greatest of these, love. Because of God's love, because of who he is, that he is love, he's driven by himself to have relationship with you. He cannot but love you because he cannot be but being himself. And he himself is love. Driven by himself, he loves you. Hello? Unless you say, I don't know if God loves me because I think he changed. He's now a different God. It's not possible. Hello? Hello? But because of that love, and he is the love, you will have an unshakable hope. Hope that cannot be shaken. Hope. Christ, the hope of glory. But because God is love, and God is my eternal hope. And he is in me. He's in me, so his love is in me, his hope is in me. Therefore, by faith, I can step out. And you know, tomorrow by faith, you're going to trust God for certain things, and boom, maybe it doesn't work. It's okay. Don't believe a lie that your hope is shaken and that God is not there for you. That's the biggest glut of rubbish from hell. Don't go into that rubbish. The hope will always be there because the love will always be there. But from that unshakable place of hope in Christ. Yeah, we practice faith. We grow in faith. Sometimes we feel we lose faith. But step out in faith and practice. And then it doesn't work. But, and you don't understand why it didn't work. Because you stepped out in faith. But you know, I know, there's an excellent hope for an excellent life tomorrow in Christ. That's fixed. That is fixed. I don't understand it through my circumstances. But I take it. I take it by faith. Amen. That's for the life of a man that will conquer. A man that will see his destiny being fulfilled. Hallelujah. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Um, okay, let's just go to... Verse 11. Verse 11. In him, in him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision, not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Circumcised with Christ, circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, so that also you will be raised with him through your faith. Hello? And you've been made, in verse 13, you have been made alive with Christ. We see Galatians 2 verse 20, we are crucified with Christ. Everybody crucified with Christ, died with Christ, raised with Christ, 
seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. Now, Christ is your hope, your eternal hope. God, Christ is called your eternal hope, hope of glory, hope for an excellent life. I've been crucified with hope. You can crucify your life. You can destroy your life with stress. You can be crucified with stress, crucified with flesh, crucified with religion, crucified with performance. But all that you will have is death, no life. But when you're crucified with Christ, you are crucified with hope. And you've died with hope. You've been buried with hope. You've been raised in Christ with hope. With hope, you became alive. You are living with Christ. You are living with hope. And you are seated with hope in heavenly places. And seated with Christ in heavenly places is the place where you can look down into your situation. Look down into the failure or into the intimidation or the shaking or in this, into this success. Success is not your mountain. Success is not your platform. But seated with Christ in heavenly places. Seated with hope. He's your hope. You find your faith not from your success. You find your faith from the hope in you. Because he loves you from the beginning to the end. Amen. Amen. Please don't try to find faith through circumstances. When you have the opportunity today to have faith in God because you'll know Christ is your hope for an excellent life tomorrow. Because Christ will be there. And the hope for excellent life, the hope of glory, the hope of beauty in your life, the hope for beauty in your relationships, hope for beauty in, in, in what you do, in your work, in your studies, in, in how you relate to God, in how you relate to others. The, the hope for that beauty is in Christ. Amen. Amen. You are still here. Hallelujah. May God help you. May God help me. In Jesus' name. Okay. We are going for a landing nearly. Chapter 3, verse 1. Since then, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated with, at the right hand of God. Set your minds. First of all, verse 1, set your hearts on that is above. Verse 2, set your minds and think of that what is up there. So my heart comes from a place where I'm seated with him in heavenly places. My mind comes from a place where I'm seated with him in heavenly places. So that I can learn how to think the way he, that he thinks. What's your thoughts about my situation, God? What is your heart about my situation? So put your heart on the things above where Christ is seated. And set your minds on things above, not on the earthly things. For you, why? For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and in Christ. Where's your life? You know, oh, I don't have a life. Why? Because it's still hidden in Christ. Because you never took through the word and the spirit. Open it up. There's such an awesome, awesome, awesome life God has for me and you that is hidden in Christ. He's not going to open it up for you. Sorry. You're going to sit with the word and with the spirit and he will open it up for you. You go and walk with your God and God will open up that awesome life hidden in Christ. Hidden in Christ. Okay. Are you with me? Ah, please, are you with me? So all of this, oh, let me go with this one. Just a verse before that, talking about that, the fullness of God is in Christ Jesus. And everything we made from within him, in him, everything. And then also, and from him, everything we made. And then also for him. Everybody say, in Christ, from Christ, for Christ. 
Now that is, first of all, find your life in Christ. The hidden life. Find your life in Christ. And then from the Christ in you, a lot of stuff will happen. Because it will be God working through you. God working through you. In your work, in your studies, in your relating. It will be God through you. If you find yourself in Him, He will work through you. In Christ, from Christ within, and then for Christ. What's for Christ? That in what you do, what you create, it will be for Him. And for Him alone. Hello, uh, for Him and for Him alone. That we find in Verse 17, and whatever you do, whether in word, in what you say, or deed, in what you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. What does it mean? You find yourself in him, him through you, and whatever you do, you do it as if unto him. It is for him. It is for him. People say, don't work for the Lord, work with the Lord. No, that's nonsense. It's both. You work with the Lord, but you do it for Him. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do it for the Lord. That's worship. If He says, in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. When you do it in the name, you do it with authority. In the name of Jesus, is, we will reign with Christ as kings and priests, according to Revelation 1 verse 6. Forever you will rule as priests and kings with the king of kings and the high priest. Kings, and he is the king of kings. And he is the high priest of the priests. But you will rule with him as kings and priests. Kings in the name of Jesus today. Priests for your name's sake. In Jesus' name. For Jesus' name's sake. Priest. Are you with me? Uh, hello, you're still here? Whatever you do, whether you do it all in the name of the Lord as a king, with authority, giving thanks to God the Father as a priest. Authority. Intimacy. Everybody say authority. authority. In Jesus' name. Intimacy. For his name's sake. Kings and priests. Please remember that. And even further. We see in verse 23. Whatever you do. Work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord. Not for human masters. If you have a master. If you have a boss. And they are very bossy. And they are very nasty. They are fislak. They are. Not doing a thing good. It's not just praying that they will change. It's saying, God help me to embrace the opportunity to serve and to do my work as if unto you and not as if unto the boss. If the boss say thank you, if the boss appreciate you, if the boss is bombastic, what is bombastic in English? Really? Oh, excellent. Hey. If he's whatever way. You have opportunity that you will never, never, never have in heaven. On earth, you have an opportunity to do it for him in spite of what you feel. In heaven, there will not be a negative feeling. There will not be negative circumstances. There will not be a flesh that says, you don't want to, you don't have to. But from your spirit, you say, I will. A, a praise Offering, it costs me something. In heaven, it will not be an offering. It will not cost you something. Because of what you see, you will be so captivated by the beauty of heaven. You just would want to, want to, want to. But tomorrow you have opportunity. And that is, that is when you don't want to serve. When you feel enslaved. You decide to be enslaved by hell and by people. It's only your choice. Even... So many times, Jesus and Paul and the guys said, Slaves, be subject to your masters. Huh. Not, you'll be set free from that slavery. No, set free from the slavery in here and the slavery in here. 
but see it as an honor to do it as if unto the Lord. Not because that guy is right. And when you give yourself, you're not saying that guy is right in how he did it, in, in what he did. And it, even if it feels unfair, you don't do something. You don't give yourself because life is fair. What is fair is Jesus is not supposed to die for you. It's unfair. It's unfair for you to go to heaven. It's unfair for you to be forgiven. But it was God's will and his grace. What is fair is dying go to hell because we sinned and not him. Hello? Don't find the life to find what is fair and not fair because he is our righteousness. What is fair and not fair is at the tree of knowledge of what is good, what is evil. It's so close to the truth. What is good, what is evil. I mean, it's so close to the truth. It sounds so innocent. It sounds so logic to know what is good and what is evil. Hello? <laughs> Are you with me? But my righteousness is not a self-righteousness. My righteousness in Christ. Christ is my righteousness. Christ is my right standing righteousness. My right standing with God is only in Christ. That's why if you are in Christ, what you do, you always focus back to Christ. If you are in Christ, then Christ will work through you, and what you do will always focus back to Christ. When you do it in your name, and you are right, and then what you do will always try to come back to you to say, He is right. He is right. He is right. But do it in Christ. We say, God is awesome. God is awesome. God did it. Only God did it. Only His grace. Only because of his love, his compassion, his mercy that endures forever. Let us have that life. Amen. Because that's when we can give people hope in this world at this stage, especially. Where everything is shaken and Jesus said in the end times there will be wars and rumors of wars. And everybody has a bone to pick with one another. With Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Yemen and some other countries and, and Iran and, and China and Taiwan and this one and Japan with China and this one with that one. And, and we are in the end time. It's time to rise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord, the beauty of the Lord has risen upon you. It's time for the church to shine in every nation. Amen. Let's say, I will arise. I will shine. For my light has come. And God's beauty has risen upon me. Isaiah. God through the prophet Isaiah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Last verse. Chapter 3, verse 16. 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Rule. Rule. Rule in your hearts. So peace is the place of protection. Peace is a place of guidance. But peace is also called Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Peace, there's authority in peace. You know, there's a peace where a lot of people have a lot of fights. Let's run, everybody, quarrelly, quarrelly. And then one guy stands up and just suddenly it's silent. And he speaks. And everybody's just amazed at that wisdom. And the presence of God was just there. The authority of peace came through. And everything is settled. Wow. Ah, the church must come in like that. In the cities, in the towns, in the schools, in universities, and wherever we are. That when the church, when you open your mouth, the authority of peace is just there. Don't go pshh. You with me? That is just there when you open your mouth. People are amazed. They are amazed. See? Like the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all those seas, they, they looked at them and said, these guys, they're not educated. But when they speak, it's just like coming through. They were amazed at these fishermen that walked with Jesus. 
Okay. So the real war, last verse, is verse 16. Let the message of Christ, the words of Christ, dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude, thankfulness in your hearts, in your hearts. Let's the word, let the word of Christ, the message of Christ, let the word of Christ dwell richly in and among. In and among. You know, among these people, there's just a lot of rage, a lot of bitterness. You know that. You can come in a group and you know there's just a lot of bitterness here. Sometimes you even see it with politics, with this one or that one. But remember what we said about politics? You don't condemn. Because in every, every place, God has a Daniel and a Joseph that he placed there. So you don't say, that party is like this and that party. Be careful with that finger. You can curse a Daniel that's in that place, called by God to make a difference. Are you with me? Pray. Think about them in prayer. That's it. Okay, that was beside the point, or the other side of the point. Let the word of Christ dwell in you and among you. There's words that can dwell among a certain group. I don't know if, if you've seen that. You've seen a, a group, but you just know. Whatever they are talking about is rubbish. Or it's, it's something, it just... Amper vertale kom, krap jou siel. What your... Um, irritates your soul. Um, <laughs> it irritates your soul. Because you see and you just feel. It's not the word of God dwelling richly among them. But when people come into a conversation where you guys are, the church is supposed to be in such a way that where the children of God are speaking, the, the world and the other guys love to be in your conversation. Because the type of words, the type of conversation, is, is, there's quality, there's substance. I'm not saying you must preach the whole time and you must quote the word the whole time to one another. But what is coming from your spirit is... Nice. It's refreshing. It's beautiful. Well, first of all, I say, God help me. I need that. I hope you need it also. But that we can trust God for such a life that after Paul explained so many things that we didn't even talk about, we can speak for another 10 hours, explained a lot that he says, so let the word of God dwell richly. Let there be a richness in your conversation. Let there be quality. Let there be richness. Let's say, let's say there will be a richness in my conversations. And it's not a bitterness. It's not a poison in my conversations. It's not a muscle It's not a negativity. You know, there's a few, they sit there and they speak to one another, but you can just smell the depression. It's just there. You hang there. No. That's why when we come together, when we come together, if he says, if they say, okay, so that means you sing. sing in and over here. Yeah. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing in to God with gratitude, with thankfulness in your heart. There must be a song in your heart, my brother. Not a suffering song of Jeremiah, but there must be a song in your heart unto the Lord. Are you with me? Are you with me? And so it's not like, and when you don't know how to worship God and you find it difficult, then go that somebody set you free in the name of Jesus, that you be set free from whatever devil is trying to keep you away from worshiping God. But put on the worship music where you are. Sing to the Lord in, in, in your car, where you drive and where you are. Hello? There was this lady, some of you guys don't, don't remember that one. There was this lady and she was just working in the kitchen. She was just washing dishes and making food. That was her life. For her husband, I don't know how many kids, but in any case. And she just sang a new song every time. and Just had the song of, from God in her hearts. Who knows the story? One remember. Two, three, thank you. The rest I forgive you. 
And you know, and the quality of what she sang, God took it and said, I want this, what is on her lips, I want it on the lips of my church in the nations. So he took that song, what she sang in the kitchen doing the dishes. And the song is, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. You know that song, huh? That song was just this lady enjoying her God in the kitchen, day after day after year after year, making food, washing dishes. And God said, that quality must be on the lips of my church in the nations. And he took it there. Amen. Let's encourage one another with psalms and go on into the field here and sing a song. And Yeah, I don't know if we have time, but so at my house, there's a lot of Kriari students and students that stay there for discipleship and for my discipleship also to become more patient and all that type of things. But in any case, oh, when we had a year or two or three ago, we had a guy, he was very passionate. Now you have a commandment to sing psalms, hymns, and songs. So he started to learn guitar, and he wanted to worship God with a guitar, and that's very good. But he cannot sing, he sing in B suspicious, not to be flat or be, he, he's singing all over. You don't, he's it's not singing all over the note, it sounds that you've never heard before. Oh! And he would do it full out in the garden, you know, there where we stay. You know, and oh, God had he tested us. So my even my my wife prayed more for the new home where we need to move to. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Our flesh were tested. But this man he worshipped God faithfully, full out with a very loud voice in my garden. Yeah, but it's good. It's good. We must do it. Amen. Amen. So, the, as long as it is, my heart is in tune with heaven, the voice can be all over the place. But if my heart is tuned with heaven, I can have a very beautiful voice, but it's horrific what reaches heaven because it's coming through my heart going to heaven. May God help you. May God help me that we will do all of this with gratitude in our hearts. So that whatever you do in word or in deed, all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Start with a thank you in your situation. Start with a thank you. Amen. He looked up to heaven and he had five loaves of bread and two fish and he thanked the Father. Thank you, my God, for who you are and what you do in and through our lives. God, I pray that we will see your purposes. That we will be excited about our future as you are. I pray for every man, woman in this place, even if they are scared or having fear or stress, anxiety or situations, intimidations, things that they need to deal with. God, I pray that there will be a thank, a thank you in them. That they will come to you and come to know who you really are. Come through your spirit, God, and Holy Spirit, guide us to understand the knowledge of the Father's will, the heart of God in his will. Not for us to reason out if it's logic or not, Lord, but that we will just know you have only the best for us. Help us to see that. Give us your wisdom to know how to apply everything that you have for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, help us to eat your word, to enjoy your word through the Spirit, to, to take your word in our hearts and in our minds as you write it on our hearts and our minds through the promise of the new covenant. God, so that we will have the knowledge, the understanding, the understanding of what you want to do. God, we desire to walk with you, not to walk with stress, not to walk with the problem, not to walk with crisis management in Jesus' name, not to walk with a weakness. No, we walk away from that, but we take your hand and say, thank you for the honor. Thank you for the privilege that we have to walk with you, the master of this universe. Thank you, Lord. 
that we can walk with you. But in that, Lord, help us to, to understand how to do the work as we walk with you. That we will not focus on all the job, all the, all the things that need to happen, but we forget to walk with you into that opportunity, into that challenge. We choose that every man, every woman in this place, that is our decision through the grace of God so that we will bear fruit for your name according to your desire, the way that you want us to live, and that is to enjoy life with you. I pray that you will open it up for every man, every woman in this place to enjoy life and how to enjoy life with you. Thank you that you come and you do that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Christ in us. Our hope for a beautiful, 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 awesome life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.